Tonight on the Americanca News. It's one of Europe's greatest mysteries. Our Serbian, Croatian, Bosnian, and Herzegovinian, and Montenegrin the same language. What are the differences between them? And what do you even call the language? Those questions answered tonight on the American Canoes. What's up, everyone? Dobar dan. Zdravo. Bok. Anyway, this is Wando here, that American chick that's been living in the Balkans for a long ass time now. So this is a question that comes up quite a lot and I know there's a lot of travelers out there who like to make the effort of speaking with locals and it can be confusing. Are Serbian, Croatian, and Bosnian, and Montenegrin the same language? So I'm gonna answer that question first. Then, just how different are they? Are the differences big enough that you should take a different language class for each country? Then I'll share some example sentences of the major differences to watch out for when you're traveling from country to country. And the most scandalous question, what should you even call the language? There's time codes for each section, so feel free to skip around. But to answer the first question... To make a long story short, yes, they're the same language. So basically, there are dialectical shifts and regional variations from country to country, even region to region within the countries themselves. But at the end of the day, they are the same language. And travelers who like making that effort shouldn't be so worried about like, oh my God, uh, I learned Serbian. Uh, how different is it gonna be in Croatia? And if you're wondering what are my uh, credentials, what's my qualification for being able to categorically say that yes, they are the same language? Well, one, no matter which country I'm in, everyone says things to me like, ah, oh, dobro pričas hrvatski, dobro pričas crnogorski, oh, kako ti znaš bozanski. Which is funny because I say the same words in every single country. So I guess I speak four languages. <laughs> And by the way, I, I, I don't speak it well. I, I just know how to say dobro dan. <laughs> don't get too excited. And two, I create audio phrase books for these languages. And I see in putting these books together, the same sentences in English translated in Croatian, Serbian, whatever, are 99.89999 the same. <laughs> so those are my credentials. Okay. Let's move on. Oh yeah, shameless plug, there's a link in the description to those phrase books. You can get the first chapter for free. At this time, the Serbian phrase book is still not out. It should be out at the end of the month, but you can get it for free if you're on the mailing list right now and you've been waiting. Thank you. So if they're all the same language, why are there four names for the same language? So I feel like this question deserves an entirely separate video that deserves a lot more attention and care and Xanax. But long story short, due to some political things, some separatist movements, I'll link to an article that I think is really helpful in the description. This video, I just wanted to make a quick video answering, are they the same language? What are the major differences? And move on. Okay, so then just how different are these languages? So. I always like to describe it like this. You know how in standard English, someone would say, how are you doing? But in the South, in the United States, in some states, there's this regional dialectical shift where someone might say, how you doing? How you doing? They just removed the R and dropped the G off of the end of the word doing. But they still obviously are saying, how are you doing? It's like that, <laughs> like regional dialectical shifts so obvious that you don't need to have English and then Alabama-ish or Florida-ish. <laughs> we definitely don't need Florida-ish. We, we definitely don't need that. That would, that would be the end of the world. Now, of course, it's not that simple. There are some changes in vocabulary and things like that. So I'm going to go over some of the obvious regional dialectical shifts 
that you will notice as a traveler who's making an effort to speak this language. So the first major shift is the grammatical structure of sentences. Basically, you'll notice a difference in structuring sentences that have back-to-back -back verbs. Croatian is similar to Romance languages like Spanish, French, Portuguese, and English, which isn't a Romance language, where the first verb is conjugated and then you have the infinitive. Whereas with Serbian, it's the conjugation plus another conjugation. So here's an example. So in English, you're at a bar, you're at a restaurant, and you signal the waiter and you say, I can pay now. Croatian follows the same structure. And I'm gonna use clips from my audio Facebooks to pronounce these sentences because I don't want to embarrass myself too much. So in Croatian, it's... Mogu li platiti sada? But literally translates to, can I pay now? But in Serbian, it's... Mogu da platim sada? So that translates to, I can, that, I pay, now. So it's literally the same words as you can see. There's just that difference in structuring sentences grammatically that have back-to-back -back verbs. The second major shift is vocabulary. All of these countries have a lot of different influences from different conquests throughout the region, different empires that came through, the Ottomans and the Austrians and the Germans and the Italians. I mean, so the Balkan region is like littered with shifts in vocabulary depending on what region you're in, even just region to region within a single country, especially Croatia, I think it's just the most fascinating when it comes to this. So long story short, there are some vocabulary changes, but they're not so different where you have to call the language two different, langu two different languages or four different languages because <laughs> most of the vocabulary is the same. So let's go back to Serbian versus Croatian. I just think that's the easiest example. So let's say that the waiter comes to you after you say, I can pay now. The waiter comes to you and says, cash or card. In Croatian, that would be Gotovina ili kartica. In Serbian, that would be Cash ili kartica. So Serbian's pretty similar to English, cash, cash. Croatian, gotovina. Very different. Another word, and you'll notice this if you spend time in both countries, is the word for coffee. In Serbia, it's kafa. In Croatia, it's kava. So you'll have experiences where you might say something the way you'd say it in Croatia, in Serbia, or see something on a menu, or just little things like that where you'll pick up on the differences. But again, these differences aren't so big that you have to learn an entirely different language. So the third major shift is with the slight difference in spelling of certain words. So these are words where it's the same word <laughs> in every country, but from one country to another, there might be one extra letter in the word two extra letters. And you'll see this most frequently in the spelling of certain words where in Serbia it just has an E, but in Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro, there will be a J in front of the E or an IJ in front of the E. So for example, the word where. In Serbia, that's gde. Gde. But in Croatia, for example, Bosnia, it's gde. Gde. Gdje. Another example is the word nice or pretty, beautiful, um, but specifically referring to a noun that is the female gender, which if you've never studied a foreign language before and you only speak English, you're like, what the fuck do you mean a noun with a female gender? Anyway, story for another day. <laughs> so that word in Serbian is lepa, but in Croatian, Bosnian, it's Liepa. And to make things extra funny, slash cool, slash fun, um, coastal Croatia, Dalmatia region, it's Lipa. And these differences in the spelling of words with E versus J-E versus I-J-E is part of one of the dialectical naming systems referred to as Ekavica or Ekavian, predominantly spoken in Serbia versus Iekavica, 
or Iakavian, <laughs> predominantly uh, spoken in Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro. Montenegro is a little bit more confusing, but story for another day. The story of a million years, the Balkans, and Ikavica or Ikavian, uh, predominantly spoken in Croatia as well in those coastal regions. So those are the three major differences. Of course, there's other differences. We're talking about the Balkans here. I'm already out of breath. <laughs> so just for example, Croatia has an entirely different uh, naming system for their months compared to uh, Serbia. There's also another dialectical naming system called Stokovica versus Stokovica. That's so hard. Stokovica versus Kajkovica. There's a lot. So I'm not even going to get into all of that. That's again a story for another video. The most important thing is that as you spend time in each of these countries, you get used to each of their slight uh, variations in speaking style. But you are speaking the same language. Which brings me to the last question that people have. It's the scariest question. And that is, what do you call the language? I've learned throughout the years of spending so much time in all of these countries is just call the language by the name of the country that you're in, in that moment. It's like the most PC thing to do. It's the most respectful thing to do. And it's just, the easiest way to stay out of trouble. <laughs> and when you're in Croatia, they're gonna call it Croatian. When you're in Montenegro, they're gonna call it uh, Montenegrin. It might be kind of weird to get used to if you like took a Serbian class or you took a Croatian class and then you're in Bosnia and um, people are asking you um, how you learned Bosnian, you know? Um, and yeah, when people ask me this question, I, I say, oh, I live in Serbia or I studied Serbian online and they're like super cool about it. But there have been a time or two where I did tell someone that I studied Serbian and they were angry that I didn't refer to the language as the country I was in. This happened in Montenegro actually. <laughs> um, so I just learned the most PC thing to do is just name the language by the country that you're physically standing in in the moment you're referring to the name of the language. But here's the most important thing I want you guys to remember. People will understand you just fine no matter which class you took, Serbian, Croatian, Bosnian, they'll understand you just fine in each of these countries. So speak the language, have fun, and that's going to end this video. Comment below if you want me to bring on a linguist or an etymologist or whatever, ling a linguistic historian to navigate the conversation <laughs> of why this language has different names and why there's been such a complicated history in terms of having one name for the language. It's very fascinating. Again, I've linked to articles that tackle that topic in the description. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video very, very much. And I will see you guys in the next video. So, bok, adio, dovidenia, <laughs> bye.